Let's do the news. Week and a half ago, we talked about the Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS, releasing a report. And in that report, they said, oh, sorry, we got the numbers wrong. Our country added 800,000 jobs fewer than what we thought. The economy is not doing well. Sorry about our enormous mistake. Economy not good. Next one, economy not good. We talked about Dollar General and their precipitous decline last Thursday because people are struggling. They can't buy things. And Dollar General can't sell things. So they're not doing very good because that's what Dollar General is supposed to do is sell things. And a little bit more bad news. So this is Warren Buffett. He is the head of Berkshire Hathaway. It is an investment firm. They invest in the stock market. He is known as the Oracle of Omaha, probably one of the most famous investors ever. Well, he pretty much sold a bunch of his Bank of America stock. Now, that's not Bank of America in terms of the Federal Reserve. It's just a big bank in America. It's not a government bank. It's just one of the bigger banks. And he sold a lot of his shares and said, I don't want this. I'll take the cash. And Bank of America is their third largest holding. So this is a big time investment firm. They've got stock everywhere. And the stock that they own the third most of is Bank of America. And he sold a bunch of it because he doesn't like the way the stock's going. He wouldn't sell it if he thought Bank of America's stock was going up. He believes it's going to go down, so you better sell it now before it goes down. Like if you sold Dollar General on Wednesday, you look pretty good. And so that's what he's doing is selling his Bank of America stock before it happens, whatever happens. And he said, you can see in the bottom, he didn't really want to sell it. He tried to hold off. Well, that's not a good sign. Our economy is not doing well. How do we fix our economy? How do we help Dollar General out? How do we help the people without jobs? Well, we just need to get money in the economy. So the Federal Reserve loans money to banks. We've gone over this. We will go over this. Become familiar with it. The banks loan from the Fed. They take loans out from the Fed. They borrow, just like you and I borrow. And they've got to pay it back with interest. So they borrow money, and then they lend that money out to firms and households. And then firms and households spend money. And that stimulates the economy. You spend your money at Dollar General. You spend your money wherever it is. Firms spend money on expanding. Firms spend money on other firms. Dollar General buys stuff from groceries or from farmers. They also, the firms pay their workers, hire more workers. So then you have more money in the economy. They spend, and the more that they shop, more firms and businesses grow and expand, and that's how it works. Fed loans to the banks, banks loan it out, people start spending. That spending helps businesses grow, and as businesses grow, they expand, they spend more. That causes other businesses to grow, construction companies to grow, more workers are infused. Now you got more people working, and they're spending, you get it. So more money in the economy leads to more spending. That allows the firms to grow, and as firms grow, or businesses, they hire more workers. And then those workers are spending and the economy grows. Great. So we just need to print a bunch of money and send it out into the economy. Seems like a plan, right? So Federal Reserve loans some money to the banks. It's virtually like printing money. The only problem that we will run into, and we'll talk more about this and you know about it, as you inject more money into the economy through these loans, you do the run the risk of inflation and prices going up. So we do need to help the economy out. We need Dollar General to survive. And that means we need people to be able to spend. So people need money. But we have to be cautious of injecting too much money because then prices just go up. Now, the Federal Reserve, the head of it, Jerome Powell, came out and said that he plans on cutting interest rates, which is basically printing more money. But that could lead to more inflation. But he says, don't worry about it. The reason we had such bad inflation wasn't that we printed too much money or we had interest rates too low. And interest rates are the reason why banks borrow more. If their interest rate is low, then they will borrow more. If the interest rate is high, banks are less likely to borrow. You and I are less likely to borrow. You'll see that in the upcoming lesson, how low interest rates encourage borrowing and how high interest rates discourage borrowing. So low interest more borrowing, more spending, yay, yay, yay. 
And he's saying the reason why we had inflation the first time wasn't the low interest rates. It wasn't the increase in borrowing and spending, although that did factor in. He said the main culprit for the reason why we are dealing with inflation over the last couple of years is because not low interest rates, but because of low supply. And that low supply, a combination with some low interest rates, caused the inflation. And he is saying that it's not going to be a problem. We can lower interest rates, shoot a bunch of money into the economy. It's not going to cause inflation this time because he believes supply is going to be all right. And we'll explain how that's going to work. You can see on your screen, poly market and the betting public in politics says that 96% chance he's going to come out September 18th and say we're cutting interest rates. And when he cuts interest rates, lowers interest rates, banks will borrow more. And then firms and businesses and households will borrow more and everybody will spend. The worry is inflation, but he thinks it's going to be all right. He thinks our supply of goods and services is good and will get better. Here's how it works. So again, the banks loan the money. The Fed loans the money to the banks, the individual regional banks around the country. They all borrow because interest rates are low. It's cheap and easy to borrow. That same thing is passed on to, we'll just focus on the firms, businesses that want to grow, businesses that may have been holding off for the last couple of years because interest rates have been high. You want to expand your business. You need borrowed money to do that. Maybe use that borrowed money to hire more workers, but you didn't because interest rates were too high. Now that the interest rates are low, say, all right, we're going to add on to our building and we're going to add more employees by borrowing this money. And then as you expand, obviously you're hiring construction workers. And so that's more jobs. That's more work for other firms. Um, you're buying raw materials to expand your business and so on and so forth. So as you spend, it helps also the other firms. So as that firm spends, it helps other firms. And all this happens because you've got low interest rates. Now, again, that back of our mind story is what about inflation? Well, here's the theory that Jerome Powell is trotting out. And it's not a terrible theory. It's that by borrowing this money and expanding, by building your business bigger, by hiring more workers, you're going to increase production, whatever it is that your company makes. And as you increase production, you're going to create more supply of what are the goods that you make. Whether you're a farmer, whether you build crankshafts or cars, you borrow the money so that you could do more work. And that more work results in a higher supply of cars, higher supply of food, higher supply of whatever the product is. And as we know, when supply goes up, prices come down. And so that should negate inflation. Putting a bunch of money into the economy causes problems with a low supply of goods. That causes inflation. If production can keep up with the money we are ejecting into the economy and production increases and supply increases, then prices will decrease and we won't see such a big problem with inflation. That's the theory. Borrow a bunch of money, make more stuff. With more stuff, prices come down. Supply high means price low. Fingers crossed. That's how it's going to work out. That's the news.